Dax, let's start with this. Why was now the right time for you to make the jump in pursuit of your NFL dream? Well, obviously it's a bittersweet thing and there's some controversy and whether or not I made the right decision, but overall I've had great support from it. And I just thought, you know, what was the best thing for me and my family? And I just, I just wanted to ride this momentum of the great season that we had um, just right into right in the NFL. Um, I feel like this will be my, my best shot to do it. The only controversy I see is whether you spend a lot of time or no time on your hair. Can you clarify? <laughs> that's for the audience to think about and find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about this. So you you have 285 receiving yards last year. Uh, there were three seniors. There was Matt Bushman. Those guys graduate. Matt Bushman gets hurt preseason. All of a sudden, you and Gunnar Romney explode, and in particular you. You go from 285 to 1188. How did that happen? Uh, man, just... A lot of, a lot of things had to go right. Um, Zach, uh, being the great quarterback, he is you know the O line giving him time. Um, but yeah, like you said, I think just the biggest difference is those, those seniors leaving. Um, they were great. They taught me and Gunner a lot. But with them leaving, it just gave um, us more of an opportunity to just go out there and make plays. Um, I think we, we've always had the confidence in ourselves that we could go out there and do that. We just uh, needed the opportunities to do so, and I think we, we capitalized. BYU wide receiver Dax Millen with us on BYU Sports Nation. Dax, at what point did a jump to the NFL first start to take hold in your mind? Um, yeah, good question. It, it was pretty unexpected this season uh, just because it happened so fast. I remember one practice about halfway through the season, um, our running backs coach, Harvey Unga, he, he like pulled me aside and was like, so have you started to think about the NFL stuff? And I'm like, ah, not really. And he's like, well, I've just, just let you know, I've had multiple scouts ask about you and, and I've talked to a lot of people and that's kind of when it hit me like, wow, this is, this is an actual possibility if, if I just keep doing my thing and, and uh, work hard. So, yeah. Was that weird for you? Because you've gone from obviously the, uh, you know, talked about, hey, walk on to you have a couple one-handed catches and you're sure-handed last year, but you're like the fifth or sixth guy to, whoa, 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 whoa. We're like six games into this. Now we're talking about the NFL? Yeah, it's super, super weird, but obviously just super grateful for the opportunity and the way that the everything shook down. So Dax, what was the toughest part about making this decision to forego another season at BYU? Man, it really was a tough decision. I'd say the toughest part was just thinking about, you know, all the relationships I have with, with the guys on the team and, and the coaches um, like Fessy and, and Kalani and A-Rod, just all the offensive coaches, just everyone's great. And it's just hard to leave a comfort zone um, like that where everything's just been so fun. Um, BYU's been great. So that's what really made it difficult. But I just – I think this is my best my best uh, shot I'm going to get, so I'm going to take it. And it makes sense, Dax. It really does. Like, you, there was a first-round quarterback and a first-team All-American left tackle and, and an offense that was spectacular and, and a schedule that you guys took advantage of after it blew up, right? And uh, it was a special season. So it makes total sense. So what kind of feedback are you getting relative to the opportunity of the NFL? Obviously, draft pick would be nice, but if that didn't happen, there's still a lot of BYU Cougars in the NFL having success in spite of that. Yeah, yeah. Um... If, if it doesn't happen within the official draft, I'm I'm pretty confident that I'll at least get uh, someone to sign me and give me a shot in, in that way. But, yeah, the overall support has been great. Everyone's been super nice in, in reaching out and, and telling me that um, that they hope the best and, and hope I do make it and everything. So I'm just super grateful for everyone in uh, Cougar Nation. Did you get feedback that said you could be a draft pick or was this the iron will never be hotter than this? I might as well go now situation or perhaps a combination. Uh, combination. I've, I've been told 
as high as is, is fourth round that that'd be like that's my goal is to be drafted in the fourth round and so i've heard four four to seven or or even undrafted so all right dax when you think about the build-up to the draft obviously there are a lot of things that have to happen preparation training uh you're probably going to move somewhere different and then you hope to get an invite to the combine. What are what are the next few days, the next few months like for you as far as the timeline goes? Yeah, so the starting today, I'm going to fly out to Irvine, California, and just and that's where I'll be putting my head down and, and grinding for the next few months until uh, pro day. Um, just get my my body and head right. Honestly, um, a lot of work has to be done between now and, and then, and, and as well as the combine, if I'm fortunate enough to get an invite to that, or if it even happens due to COVID and whatnot. So yeah, a lot of work needs to be done and I'm just excited to get to it. Wait, so you're not going to drive 10 hours each way <laughs> back and forth multiple times. My name is not Zach Wilson. <laughs> I don't do that every weekend. I don't. John Beck is a great guy, but I don't need him personally. Um, <laughs> hey, that's me with Dennis Pitta. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take us, take uh, us back to uh, three years ago, Dax. So you're coming out of Bingham. You probably feel like you've been undersold uh, quite a bit. You end up walking on at BYU. You take a chance. You could have taken a scholarship somewhere else, right? And here you are declaring for the NFL draft coming off a thousand yard season. Like, what has this experience been like you to go from you knew you were good, but maybe others around you didn't quite see it in the same way to where you are now? Yeah, uh, to be honest, I wouldn't want to have it any other way. I, I enjoy being the underdog. I enjoy um, being sort of overlooked. Uh, proving people wrong is, is something I love to do. And... Um, you're right. I couldn't have done, I couldn't have done that if I didn't believe myself, and and uh, and even if I, my family didn't believe in me, I, I don't think I would have done it. So I, I owe a lot to them. I thank them for being someone to lean on um, during those tough decisions in the past and, and even now. So, um, like I said, uh, being the underdog is is something that uh, I really hang my hat on, and I'll continue to have that attitude going into this next chapter of my life. Which current and or former BYU football players are you looking to for advice on how to get ready for the NFL draft appropriately? Besides John Beck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, to be honest, I haven't really talked to any uh, former former BYU people. But I'm sure I will here in the near future. But um, so far, I've just talked to um, just – NFL people like scouts and, and agents and, and a couple other college players that have declared. So, but I'll, I'll probably get in touch with, with some, some BYU people. Dax, a lot of movement yesterday, obviously with the BYU coaching staff, Jeff Grimes goes to Baylor as the offensive coordinator. Aaron Roderick is promoted to offensive coordinator officially, although he's been in, involved heavily in play calling, of course. Vesitake, uh, your guy uh, upgraded to pass game coordinator. What, you, what was your reaction to all that movement? I thought it was, I thought that was going to happen for sure in my head. And I'm glad it did. Um, makes perfect sense. Grimes is great. He was a great leader for, for our offense. Um, he's, he's a, a great coach and I respect him a lot. And I think he'll, he'll do great over there in Texas, but um, having a rod and Fessy promoted into the positions they are now, it just, it makes perfect sense. And, and I'm, and I'm happy for him and, I'm happy for the guys that get a get a play for him in, in these next couple of years. It's that'll be good. What do you expect from the guys that remain at BYU? Notably the quarterbacks, Baylor Romney, Jaron Hall, Sojay Maiava, Jacob Conover, and the receivers like Gunnar Romney, Neil Powell and company. Yeah, I expect big things from from my boys uh, at the quarterback spot. I'm sure you guys are going to have plenty of shows debating who the, who, the, who the guy is coming up. But, hey, I'm telling you, I've, I've been impressed by each and every one of them. They've, they've shown things that just make me stand back and just, you know, be like, wow, that, that was amazing. And, and, and you guys have seen Gunner and, and Neil make plays. I know they're just going to continue to, 
to get better and and carry um carry these uh younger guys up into the into the starting positions and 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 make sure that they can compete and com- and make plays for the team so i'm excited for all of them Dax, you've been my guy for a while now, so I'm not about to leave you hanging without some BYU Sports Nation karma as you prepare for uh, your NFL dream, man. So take a full, full entourage of karma and do your thing. A dosage. <laughs> He's taking it in. Thank man. you, guys. <laughs> you got it, man. Good luck to hey, you. You guys have been great, man. I just appreciate all the all the love you guys have shown. Um, your show is great. I love, I love being with y'all, so just appreciate you. You got it, Dax. Congratulations, man. We'll talk to you again soon. All right.